Spirit. As we enter into these sacred mysteries on this Wednesday, the second week of Easter, let us call to mind our need for the Father's forgiveness. You raise the dead to new life in the Spirit, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall, year by year, the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, Human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith, we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and, filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, let them out, and said, Go, and take your place in the temple area, and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison. 
So they came back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Let your faces not be ashamed. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the and see the goodness of the Lord. St. John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he's not believed 
in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. Everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How do we deal with conflict? This first reading gives a, a delightful example of how better to deal with conflict. We've certainly seen our share of it, at least in my lifetime. We've had all sorts of demonstrations for this and demonstrations for that and demonstrations for the other. And they normally go well unless some kind of violence enters in and then it's ugly. Well, let me tell you a couple of stories. Uh, my brother who lives nearby has three children. As you can imagine, they're different from each other, duh. My nephew's the oldest. He's also the most like me, obstinate. Uh, my brother, has gotten frustrated with me most of my life over my no. Uh, I used to tell my sister-in-law that if she ever wanted to kill her son, all she had to do was tell him uh, to breathe because no matter what she asked him to do, it was always no. My niece, on the other hand, four years younger, was always yes. Now, she didn't do it, but she never said no. I was sitting one evening watching television with the two of them when he was about eight, she was about four, and her mother told the boy to go to bed, and of course he said, no. And she said, yes you are, and he said, no I'm not. Well, the little house they lived in at the time was one of these little uh, ranch houses where you've got the kitchen, the dining room, the living room, the family room, with doors at either side of that wall. Well, it looked like a Tom and Jerry cartoon because she's chasing him and they're running in circles. In the meantime, the four-year-old sitting on the sofa with me, calmly watching television. At one point, her mother says, Brittany, go to bed. And she says, okay, mom. But she doesn't move a muscle. Meanwhile, Tom and Jerry are still at it. Um, let me tell you maybe a little more spiritual story. I had the great honor, 1984, of going to Calcutta, India and meeting Mother Teresa. Um, I said mass at her mother house almost every day I was there and uh, at least three of those days she was there. She had been away visiting her sisters in the Seychelles Islands when she came back. Um, by good fortune, the priest who normally said the mass, good fortune for me, not for him, he, he got sick. And so he asked me to do the Mass myself, and I said, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Well, lo and behold, who was there that morning? But Mother Teresa herself. And then after Mass, she comes in the sacristy to thank me for saying Mass for the sisters and to invite me to breakfast. I was very uh, honored. And I asked her how things had gone, and she said she'd gotten back the day before, but it was a busy afternoon because she had been called in to the local authorities and had been accused of unlawfully using foreigners to do social work. Undocumented labor, I guess. And uh, she said, well, I, I told the man that we don't do social work, never have. And he said, well, what do you call it? When you have all these foreigners here and they're working with these dying people and going to this leper colony and." She said, well, 
as it were, that the house for the dying people in Calcutta used to be a guest house for pilgrims who were coming to the temple of Shiva, which is next door. At the temple of Shiva, they sacrifice goats and maybe some other animals as offerings. And all day long, you'll see little groups of pilgrims in their orange robes making their way to the temple of Shiva. She said, I would never dream of stopping them because they believe that they're going to have an encounter with their God when they go there. She says, similarly, these people come from all over the world because they believe that they will have an encounter with their God by dealing with these people and I can't stop them. What rang in my head was clever as a serpent, guileless as a dove. Certainly guileless, but also clever. The disciples seem to be uh, foreshadowing Mother Teresa because, of course, there's all sorts of tension. Not long before this, the religious authorities had managed to get Jesus killed. They had no interest in this new way, and so they put the disciples in prison. Miraculously, an angel has freed them from prison but notably, what didn't they do? What they didn't do was spit in the eye of their opponents. Instead, they quietly and respectfully went about their business, doing what they thought should be done. And because of that, the authorities could really take no action against them because they weren't doing anything offensive. Uh, I'm sure the Sanhedrin were frustrated as they could possibly be, but the disciples had chosen wisely, clever as serpents, guileless as doves. Now let's move on to this gospel. Oh, what a beautiful reading. Probably the most quoted piece of scripture here in the Bible Belt. John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Uh, romance is a beautiful thing. It's lovely to watch. Uh, one of the delights of watching high school children is the little, the little games that get played when boys are around girls and girls are around boys and uh, they're vying for each other's attention. I remember one day in my kitchen in Cartersville looking out the window and there was a female robin dancing with two boys. Oh my gosh, it was like going to a high school dance because she was making her little moves and those little boys were making their little moves. But my question was, who made the first move? And my money is on the girl. I think women are always cleverer and, oh, subtle, subtle. Who makes the first move in our relationship with God? Well, God does. He reaches out to us in a thousand different ways. Why? because God so loved the world. He created the world because he loved the world. He created us because he loved us. And he wants to dance with us until he wins our hearts completely because he won't be satisfied until we understand how much he loves us and then we'll be able to love him in the same way. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. Let us turn to our loving Father confident that he will hear and answer the prayers which we offer in Christ's name. Let us pray for all of those affected by this virus, those who have died, those who are sick, those who care for the sick, those who have lost loved ones, 
those who are suffering in any way, those affected economically by the uh, stay home order, and for the governments that are trying to cope effectively, that in all of these things, God's wisdom might be recognized and prevail. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for relations between nations. In this moment, it seems, things are relatively peaceful because this illness has taken so much of our attention. May we be still more peaceful when this illness ends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray in particular for the, the oil industry and for all businesses that have been so forcefully impacted by this circumstance. Those who are out of work, companies whose businesses have collapsed, that by God's grace we will recover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those who, who don't yet recognize the loving God who wants to dance with them, that their eyes will be opened and that they will enjoy the love that God has for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please offer your own intentions. Almighty God, our Father, please hear and answer these our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, which we offer from our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. O God, 
who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we've come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and is rising, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop-elect, Joel and Bernard, his auxiliaries, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Please offer to each other a sign of peace. worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. present in the most holy sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, 
and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks God be to God. Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way I once was fatherless A stranger with no hope Your kindness wakened me Wakened me from my sleep now, your love it beckons deeply, a call to come and die. By grace now I will come and take this life, take your life. Sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you've risen, victoriously. Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. Sin has lost its power. Death has lost its sting From the grave you've risen Victoriously Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way